I'm going to send the drone up, right? Because Chappie and all the boys out there have told us this story about this crocodile that they call Grandma. It's an albino crocodile, a saltwater crocodile that lives in the lagoon behind their, behind their, um, you know, their camp out there. Oh, it's like four o'clock. Yeah, it's after four. YouTube channel, why don't we just thank you, bro? Four o'clock, the episode's just starting, so could be a cracker, could be a dud. Don't know yet. Welcome back to another episode. Today is meant to be a cracker of a cracker of an adventure, but we can't find the boys. I'm just gonna send the drone up now and look for them, but it's so hot and trying to stay in some shade. So up here in the Cape is obviously we're in the middle of nowhere, there's no reception, and we'd made plans to catch up with two fellows that we'd met, Joshua and Stanton, absolute champs, and um we plan to go netting, like drag netting with them, where, that, I mean, that, their ancestors have been doing this for a long time, but I'll explain it all later, hopefully. But basically they, they drag a, a, a lagoon or a creek or like a section of a creek and just keep all the cherub and the red claw, little barra or whatever, and they take it back to the community and feed everyone. And I wanted to film it and be a part of it and just have that experience and share it with you guys. Um, we had a bit of a meeting place, they weren't there, so we've gone to another meeting place, they weren't there, we've gone back, we've just been running around all morning looking for them out here in the scrub, and finally we've decided to come out to where they were actually going to drag, and send the drone up and just go looking for them, so that's what I'm going to do now. Send us some comments below if you guys have tried cherubin, freshwater prawns, they're huge big freshwater prawns, massive, absolutely delicious, so comment below, let us know how you've cooked them, um, and if you've had them, if you've enjoyed them. We absolutely love them, and uh, and red claw as well. They get big red claw up here. Just to give you guys a bit of context about where we are. Hang on a sec. So just to give you guys a bit of context about where we are, what sort of environment we're in. When I sent the drone up earlier to cross the river, the iPhone said the temperature is too hot and my screen blacked out. It wasn't sitting on the dash or anything, it was in my pocket. All right, where are these boys? Jeez, oh, I hope we find them. This is gonna be epic if we can find them. Gee, that look at that. Look, there's some beautiful pools up there for fishing. So a few episodes back, Dane and I walked to the junction of this river and the Mitchell River. This huge big deep hole where I thought we were just going to nail the barra. And uh, caught stuff all. We got two little barra, Dane got an archer fish and Dane got a sooty. The fishing was terrible. But it looks pretty cool up here. It's not looking good for these fellas though. I can't see their car. I can't see them on the bank anywhere. Oh, Jeez guys, I need more time up here. I just want to, every river I see, I just want to spend a week there exploring it and learning it. That's what I mean about what we do as wild reaches. You can spend a lifetime up here in the Cape exploring and you can't see it all. I've seen a lot, but I don't think anyone's seen it all. Couldn't find them. Went both ways up the river about a kilometer and a half and then like, you know, gimbaled up and searched even further up the river. 
couldn't find them, so I'm gonna have to spin around and go back to the last river. I don't know, salvage a day with some fishing or something. Oh. Can't find them, mate. Really? That sucks. It's a mission out here, eh? Trying to plan anything. Yeah. Come on, boys. I know you're gonna be watching this at some stage in six months' time. We're bloody looking for you. Joshua and Stanton. Just didn't wait, did ya? <laughs> we had a meeting place. Oh well. Anyway. So we don't get to see the good bush tucker that the boys are gonna mm. produce. Yeah. That's a shame. They probably needed our help anyway with the dragnet. Show them how to do it and all that. Mm. Show, them, show them how to cook the cherubin too. Yeah, I'm sure they needed heaps of help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. What's your name, mate? Galden Frank. Galden what? Frank. Galden Frank. You got a rod there, are you going fishing? What lure yeah. you got on there? Got a little, I don't know, I thought it was a bomber, but it's different, hey? Yeah. Good barrel lure? Yeah, mate. Yeah? A big, serious leader. It's like a wire trace. So we're going to go fishing? Yeah, we're going down the river here. Yeah, take me and the boys. To a secret spot? Yeah, a secret barrel spot. All right. Well, let's get our gear together, and then we'll go for a fish. I've got to find a rod in here somewhere. Okay, yeah, it's on. You can say whatever you want. Can I shut the camera? Okay. Are oh, you going ready? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I can't want that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Go on, I'm supposed to come out. Okay. And hip down there, bruh. Oh, two yeah. hip there. Ah, two hip. We yeah. got a big snack. Man. <laughs> Say, my name is Roderick. My name is Roderick. Say, my name is Roderick. Quick. My name is Roderick. The boys that's going down here. Smash some bounce down the creek over here. Bop. Two, three hundred meters down the creek. Yeah. Can't wait to go down there. Smash some barrels. What a beautiful country it is. They call it Camp Two. Shelfo River, magnificent creeks. Wild barramundi fishing. Wild ridges. YouTube channels. Come on, find a YouTube channel on Wild Ridges YouTube. See some good video of the boys having a, having a flick, catching big mirrors down in there. Okay, YouTube channel, why we just thank you, bro. Thanks, mate. Say good day to everyone. Good day. Did you film everyone? Yeah. Introduced everyone? Yeah. Good job, Gavin. All right, mate, where's your snag with all the mirrors on it? Down the bottom. Zeke, how you going, mate? Yeah, I'm good, eh? We're gonna go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. Catch a barra. We'll be back. Yeah. All right, so obviously the mission with the cherub and drag netting fell through. Couldn't find the boys. We just had a lazy Sunday afternoon laying on the riverside having a swim. Dane cooked a damper, we had some wraps, caught up with Finn from the, from the Kawanyama school. And now we found the boys on the river. Garden's going to take us to a secret fishing spot. So hopefully we can still make an episode out of this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> What's the time? It's like four o'clock? Yeah, it's after four. Four o'clock, the episode's just starting. So could be a cracker, could be a dud. Don't know yet. Could be a three minute episode. <laughs> All right, guys, that's a wrap for another episode. <laughs> that's an extreme. Yeah. It's so low. We might They're in the water. Yeah, wow. Wish you could swim here, aren't I? Just... Yeah. So you can't swim in there, guys. There's obviously saltwater crocodiles, but look at those big malalukas hanging right out over the water. 
It is so hot here. That would be amazing to be able to swim there. Yeah, I was looking at that snag. This looks good. This is the secret spot. Look at that, guys. Oh, this is worth a cast, though. This looks good. Yeah. You see it? Get it in there. Oh, I think I saw the tail of it goes under that log. Oh, pressure's on. Yeah, take your time. Where'd you see him? Under the water, under your feet there. Spread down in this. Oh, yeah. There, look, there is. No, nah, got to keep moving. It's that same old story that you got to get past where everyone's where everyone's walking to and casting lures. Got to get past that point. And um, all the locals they walk this and fish it all. Dane's down here somewhere. Where we went fishing, it was like really steep. Looked good, but there we go. Good sign. Let me just edit this out. Jesus, how did this even come about? Torture. Right. Anyway, I've left Nath and I've, because where we were fishing, it was like really steep. Ah! Jesus. <laughs> Every day. We've lost Galvin. I think he turned back. It's just me and Dane out here now. Absolutely magic spot. So, as I'd, I'd said in yesterday's episode, I think that we were planning on doing the freshwater drift. Here's Dane's thongs. Oh, he's got the good spot. So difficult. Yeah. Lure retrieval seminars. Book in, thousand bucks ahead, limited places. Limited seats, only 500 seats available. All right, let's keep going. So yeah, we were gonna do the freshwater drift. But then, uh, I don't know, we just couldn't find the right river. Now we've found this, we probably should've just done it in here, but couldn't find the right river and we're just having so much fun meeting all the locals and getting taken out on country and showing how to do things like make the spears and um, you know just going fishing with the boys cooking lunch on the coals cooking dinner on the coals with them like some of that stuff we weren't filming but we're just having a ball with them so I suppose we're now making plans for the next season now that I know this part of the country a bit better, I can now make a proper plan for the tinny drift. Because the tinny drift, the logistics of it are a bit more tricky than any other any other trip that we do. Ah. What do you guys reckon? Oh, that looks all right down in there. A bit of cover. Look at this thing. Look at that. What a trap. Can you see that? 
and just kicked just kick that front on front on full stride far out this looks hard to fish nah keep pushing Gosh, this reminds me of some of the drains that we... Oh, I've got green ants biting me. Some of the drains that we walked up on the Wenlock Drift, on that tinny drift. Now that Dane and I are master spear makers, we're, um, we're looking for the right trees too, the spear trees. There's lots of different species that the indigenous would, would use, hibiscus being one of them. To get to make their spear shafts, um, but there's a freshwater one very similar to that. That's not it, but see how there's the trunk and then the these uprights that grow off it. Similar to that. So yeah, we're keeping an eye out because we want to make our own spears from scratch now. Oh, this snag looks okay. I'm gonna have to start walking back in a minute. I think Dane's gone back. Made it about six meters. <laughs> oh, today. Made it about six meters. Had a full on thong penetration. Look at that thing. Look at that. Right through. Look at this. These two there. Bang. Straight in the plugger. Oh man, I gotta give up on today, I think. Before I get seriously hurt. Pretty sure Dane would be pretty off me right now. He's probably back in the troopy, just sitting there waiting. So I'm back at the car. Back at the troopy. Nate's not here, he must still be fishing. I'd say catching nothing. Maybe, might have caught something. Pretty persistent. But have a look at these things. What I stood on before I went anywhere. I got out of the car and stood straight on two of these. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but one went in the right heel and one went in the left heel. Oh, I had no idea what was going on and I couldn't pull them out because they got these vicious little hooks I've never even seen that before and then I just go and stand on two of them in opposite heels I knew it was gonna be a bad day from then I just got back in the car what are they ah oh I just got me Looks hard to fish. All right, all right, I'm gonna get back. Don't know where Dane is. It's starting to get late. Can't but catch a bloody barra. I'm so dehydrated. Can't think straight, I'm sweating my ringer out. Looking at this tree here, I wonder what sort of tree that is. It's almost got that same setup like the spear shafts. You have so bloody dehydrated, you know, when you're all pasty. It's horrible. Um, it's been so hot here today, and just water is just not quenching that thirst. 
And some of these, some days like this, you just you can't catch a barrel. <laughs> big, big spider web on me. Yeah, we can't win every day. Today wasn't great. None of my plans went to plan. Um, so I think I'll just continue this episode tomorrow, hey? All right, how about I tell you guys just a few of the basics about walking through the bush. Now, a lot of you out there, I apologize, you're gonna know all this stuff, but there are a lot of people watching our channel who don't do a lot in the bush and they'd like to, they just don't have the experience. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that I, that I just do, very basic things that I kind of do without thinking. And I think it does come from just years of walking around in the bush, looking for cool stuff. I don't really have a list, so I'm just gonna like try and think of things as we go. But like this here, this here is an animal track or a cattle pad, cattle, pigs, all sorts of stuff. Animals always seem to follow a track. You can follow it too. And it's gonna be a lot easier than pushing through trees and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of the time, these pads, you see they've gone through there, I'll go around. A lot of the time these pads lead to water because the animals are basically walk, walking between water holes, rivers, lagoons, all that kind of stuff. Just makes the going easier, but you need to be aware that things that feed on animals are more than likely then gonna feed on you. Um, not so much snakes and things like that, but like leeches, ticks, um, you know, all those critters that, that feed on animals. They're going to be sitting on that same track, just on branches and on, you know, stuff like this on here to jump onto you. So just be aware of that. What else? Just find the easiest route through the bush. It's quite simple. You know what I mean? Just take the easiest possible path because, because it's going to save energy. Another one is to stop and listen. Stop and listen. Every now and then your mate might be calling you, you can't hear it because you're walking on a on ground like ground like this with lots of leaves. Or you might hear an animal, you might hear a crocodile, you might hear a wild pig, you might hear cattle. Could could save you. Always avoid spots like this, broken up timber, decaying timber with leaf matter. Spots like that and rocky kind of outcrops will um, quite often hold snakes. Wear shoes if you can. I don't like to wear them, but each to their own. I still, I still think you should all wear shoes. Just always be aware of your surroundings too. Stop every now and then. Always have like a, you know, like a compass in your mind. Always have like a, some kind of setting, whether it's the river. You know, you're following the riverbank. So you know your direction. You know how to get back to where you came from. Um, or the sun. Again, you know, knowing that, the, like the internal compass, knowing the lay of the land. I find that I do it without thinking. I'll notice plants. Um, it's just like a photographic memory in a way. Notice plants and as I'm walking through the bush and I'll, as I'm walking back, I can see them. And it's, it's like, um, it's like laying a, a trail of breadcrumbs. And just always trust yourself. Don't rely on others. You can only rely on yourself. Now I've been caught out oh, two really good times. Proper caught out in the bush. And um, it's because I was, I put my trust in other people's judgment because I thought that they'd know better. It turns out I should have trusted myself. And from that moment on, that's what I do.
All right, that's enough. There's probably heaps more. If you've got any questions, just ask me in the comments below and I'll get back to you all. It's gonna be a good day. Even these edges here look good to drop the pots. What have you, you done to yourself, mate? Hey. What have you done to yourself here? Oh, I had a, a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> a bogged motorbike. There are crocodiles in here too. Alright. I thought I found a shortcut, but... <laughs> You're going to scoot through here, are you? Yeah. Oh yeah, look how buddy boggy it is. but I don't want to bend any of the frame on the bike so Dane's putting it around one of the pegs and we're just going to go real easy just try and just 
um, take most of the pressure with the quad and then Dane can give it a push and maybe give it some gas. Can't kick it over. It's too deep. We're free. Bike's out, but it looks bloody terrible. Have a look at this. We're gonna have to give it a wash. Holy dude. She's not happy. This bike's a little bit like our old Mercury two-stroke. It's got a knack to it. Oh, I had a knack. Had a knack and it's changed now. Starter motors. Starter motors. Starter motors gone. Yeah. Getting any compression. There we go. Yes. Alright, I'm gonna try and get the quad out of here too. No reversing out of where I oh I might be able to reverse up there. Getting pretty dense in the bush here, so we're just going to get off the bikes, cut through the bush down to the creek, and um, put the cherubin pots in. We're going to use Cheerios, cocktail frankfurts, for bait, and um, I'll rig up a rod, take a lure down, try and catch a bar in here too before we go up to the next creek. So these rods are the um, cruisers, samurai cruisers. And they come in. I'll show you the compartment in a minute. These little um, rod tubes. They're so handy for doing what we're doing today. Little three piece rod, little bait caster. I think they do a spin rod as well. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys could hear me on a bike before, but we are going to put the cherubin pots in in this river because it's kind of fresh. We're hoping it's really fresh, but it's definitely kind of fresh. I can see an archer fish there and there's Mal Malukas hanging over the river here. And then go up to another river, the surprise, and chase some barramundi around. We're on the bikes just to make it a bit quicker and easier. And just because you see more country you can shoot down more tracks and just have a really good look around you get a better feel for, for where you are. I was just about to bait the pots up. And say how much we're pretty special for um we're special for bloody for getting at least one thing that's important <laughs> zip ties we even set it up there at the quad didn't we you're like no nah, bait yeah yeah you were like we always forget something yeah like, did pretty well today though and then walk down here <laughs> so today we're using cheerios for all you international viewers i don't know what you guys catch whether you guys use pots like this but these are called opera house pots and the little critter can swim in through there either side and just for some reason can't get back out and it catches like freshwater prawns they're quite big um, freshwater like big yabbies which we call red claw because they've got a huge big red claw on them heaps of little fish go in there but we let them go um, but yeah sometimes the crocs if you're putting meat like this in there or a fish frame Crocs seem to grab your pots, and I've had quite a few where they just get crushed or they get dragged away and you lose them. It's a bit frustrating, but it's all part of it. So we had the we had the hot tip on the bait. Someone gave us a hot tip for to use soap. You know who you are. <laughs> we haven't gone very well on the soap, <laughs> so we're going to change and go back. Go back to what we know. And that's processed meats. Delicious processed meats. Okay, so the other thing we do, they come in these little clips, 
after a few crocs grab them and bend them and, and all sorts they're no good this one's not too bad but like when you look at that a croc ripped that one open so we need to zip tie that but they get buckled like that and then um the little critters can get out so we just run a few zip ties around there and these guys here and they're locked shut I don't know if you guys could see that, but I just um, just had two barra come up and have a swipe at the lure, and then a third one come up and hit it, got hooked, and I just, like, it was tiny, it was like 250 mil, and I just dropped him right at my feet. Um, so I've just put the last pot in there, I think Dane's still got one more to put in up here. Now, the cherubin and the red claw, you guys might, have a different experience but I've always done way better at night so I don't have a lot of faith that we're going to be cleaning up today but it's still worth having a crack Mine's... yeah this is so much fun I love this stuff just exploring a new river like this oh, there's a snag down here Oh yeah. They're coming out from under the log. Oh, he's tiny, but he's so cool. What a cool little fish. So olive. Just the same colour as the water, pretty much. Wow. He's awesome. Oh yeah, Dane's right. This is really deep here. Just a big deep drop off. It's quite a scary spot to fish. But that edge could also hold big barra. Any slides or anything on here? Yep. Look at that. That there. There's, yep, look, there's claw marks there. At the end of my, where my lure is. Claw marks and then that's a slide. Right up to here. And another one there, where that bird shit is. That's what you got to do when you come to these spots, is just be aware, just constantly on the lookout. Otherwise you'll find yourself getting in trouble. Alright, got to be really careful for crocs here, but I'm going to cross over. Now that's really deep. And that's kind of deep, but that's only a small pool. The rest of this looks pretty good. Back over the footage, I reckon that was a little croc taken off. Just a little tucker. See that? I couldn't quite see it. I think I was looking away, but something big, well not big, big, like a big fish or a little croc, just took off from the rock here, took off into the water. I have to look back over the, the footage and see what that was. Oh, this looks beautiful. Look under this tree here. It's Malaluka, big deep hole, bit of rock. A snag in there too. Yes. Oh, this looks so good here. I don't even care if I catch a fish. Oh, no, it's on. Oh, no, it's on. Where's the little one? Oh, look at that little barrel on the Atomic Slim Twitcher. That's a beautiful little fish. But he's too small for us to eat today, so, so we're gonna let him eat. Go, how good's that? What a release! Go, mate, go! And he's off. All right, nice. Just called a 65 to 70 centimeter barra. He just had a roll on him. Put the camera back on. Because if he gets this one, he is in trouble. This is gonna be good to see. Yeah. Heart, no what are you gonna do if you hook one? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
How beautiful is this, guys? They're all whistling ducks. Whistling ducks, egrets. I think there's two different types of egrets up there. And then the big brolgas in the distance. Isn't this place absolutely magic? And it's just this little lagoon, this dirty looking lagoon that just creates and holds all this life. Look at them. More. Wow, it's so cool. I just love Northern Australia. This place is just, you can really feel it. It's crazy. The big cabbage palms there. <laughs> oh, that's epic. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna go fishing. Tree. There's one there. So we were just riding through the bush trying to get down to the river and we come across the spear tree. Is, is this the is this the freshwater spear or the saltwater spear though? I think it's a freshwater as well. I wonder if that, that there is gonna be an appropriate spear. Looks good, eh? There's a couple, or oh. some little ones up there. Yeah, you take the branch off and maybe that one. I think this is the floaty one. Yeah, I think so. That's the one. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, man. That's a beauty. All we want to do is make our own, right from scratch. Right from scratch. So we want to find this shaft. We've got the ironwood. I've got. I went and got some ironwood the other night. We've still got to finish cutting it all. How cool is that? Nice spear shaft. It's a really long one. It's way too thick, I think, up the top here. But if I cut that, you know, by the time you take your bark off, I could probably cut that there. Straighten up that end bit to like there. I reckon that's perfect. Dane and I have got one each. Some kind of anyway, I reckon we leave these here. Go for a ride down here onto the, onto the river sand. Look for some snags, fishing snags, not sausages. Sausages would be bloody good right now. We brought like a mouthful of damper each, so we're hungry, hot. It's pretty tough out here, guys. <laughs> made it to another wildly remote Cape York River. Another new river, another new day. No bloody quad tracks around except for mine. Heaps of croc slides. That's a croc there, an older one, another one there, another one there, another one there. There's a croc 
rocks everywhere here. Now this is like a brackish part of this river by the look of it, with the landscape, you know, the Malalukas and those hibiscus, um, the big steep edges here. But um, it's not salt water, but it's not pure fresh water either. And I imagine there'd be some big salt water crocodiles in here. So it's got to be take it really, uh, take it really easy. Be very, very uh, cautious. But I'm going to try and flick that snag there. I'm just going to put my Makos on. Oh, it actually looks quite shallow. Might have to go for a ride. I'll have a quick look. Yeah, it looks it looks a bit shallow. Oh, I'd love to get the tinny in here. Yeah, you can see this is tidal. Yeah, it's all wet under my feet. Very damp. So this is tidal. Huh. Oh, what a spot. Let's just have a bit of a walk, eh? Take it all in. Look for um, look for a good snag. How good is this, guys? How good is this? My little quad in the middle of this raw landscape. Uh, if only we could flick those snags over there. They're just too far away. Ooh, that's a big croc slide. Look at that one. He must be over in here. Which way is he going? No, he's going that way. So he's come out of here. He's come out of this, this corner over here and gone down into here on a lower tide, oh, on a higher tide. Look at that. That's a belly rub with a tail through it. How many mils of water do you reckon you're fishing in? Uh, be a good hundred. <laughs> nah, it's too shallow. I reckon we gotta get back on the bike. Push down this beach where Dane's going. And maybe get off and walk for a bit. Push further up and try and flick some more snags. Definitely should have brought some food. Should have brought some nuts or something, but we're all out. Might flick this spot while Dane's putting his That's a that's a likely looking spot. I think it's time to head back, jump on the quad bike. It's the middle of the day, it's bloody hot and the fishing's really slow, so no point in persisting. We'll see how we go for time, we might come back out this afternoon. All right guys, we're back. Chappie's arrived back in town. He'd uh, flown out to Cairns for the weekend and that's why we were going to catch up tonight and say goodbye. Hang on. Chappie wants to cut up some meat for us, like a roast. Maybe a couple of eye fillets to take with us on the road, which is so cool. So, pretty sure he went up this track. I lost him because he was in his car and I was in the cruiser still packing it up. Don't know where Dane is. I think he went to town to make some calls and I can't get a hold of him on the sap phone. So I'm just going to follow on the quad, hopefully find the boys. Um, there's a few of them up there with Chappie. And uh, I don't know what we're about to experience, but I'll send the drone up, show you guys the area, show you what's going on. Beautiful time of day. 
Let's go get into it. to do guys but this could be the end of season five is it season five season three season four i get confused been out in the bush a while this could be the end of season five we're leaving tomorrow to start heading south east from kawanyama down to like towards dunbar station up around a track that I haven't been on before to Chiligo, which is going to be exciting. Um, new, I love going on new roads and just seeing new country. Uh, and then heading south, back to the family, which I can't wait for either. It's always hard to leave this beautiful place. Um, Cape York has a special place in my heart. Since I lived up here, I'm just, I just feel so connected to it. And I could spend a lifetime up here exploring. I only go back for my family and for the surf. Um, Otherwise, I'd be living up here. But I've got to say goodbye um, to, to the Cape again, which is always difficult. Um, we'll be seeing Dane. We've got to say goodbye to Dane. He'll want to say goodbye to all, all of you. Um, so we'll jump back on the camera in the morning and say goodbye. But like, I want to say goodbye to you guys now and shut down season five on a beautiful sunset like this in the middle of absolutely nowhere look at this guys i can hear cockatoos in the distance you hear that it's absolutely magic thanks for watching thanks for coming along for the ride season five was a wild one it was really different and i haven't really processed it yet because i haven't normally uh, Dan and I at night will go back and watch the footage and have like little movie nights around the fire and get excited about what we filmed and this trip's been a whirlwind and we haven't done that so I don't even know what we've captured really um, I know we got a couple of good fish but it was, it was an amazing season it was amazing being connected with country seeing new country Kawanyama on the west coast I've never been over here catching up with the boys on the east coast it was, it was great so thank you for coming with us thanks for the support you know, all the shirts and that, wildreaches.com, the merch, the hats. There's going to be more coming there soon. Um, yeah, you guys are making my dream a reality. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments. Make sure you keep commenting and messaging me and telling me what you think. Because this thing's just going to keep growing, getting bigger, and I want all of you to come along for the ride. So not sure where we're going next. Um, there's a lot more country through here, like people that we've met on this trip. Shout out to Stanton and Joshua from... Well, Stanton's from Pomperau and he wants us to come up into there and see a lot of that. So maybe we'll touch on that, but I really want to go to the Kimberleys. Um, I want to take you guys to the Kimberleys. I've done it before a couple of times and it's it's just next level. It is so wild over there. And I want to take all of you and show you guys. So, But that's a big trip because um, it's going to be by boat mostly. So um, there's a boat bit of exciting news about a boat in the pipeline so um, by the time you guys are watching this we might have this new toy maybe but I'm not going to tell any of you until it's happening so keep an eye out for that thanks for watching and I'll, um, I'll see you all in the next one there's a lot of colors I don't know where to go see a lot of colors only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze 
The dreams are not the same for me. Standing by. Well, just as I sent the drone up, Chappie and the boys came through. So now they're heading back the way we came from. Apparently there's another flat up there they're going to go and check out. So I might go and try and find them. But that was beautiful. That sunset, look at that guys. Oh, I love this place. Obviously the sunset's everywhere, but I don't know, there's something about Cape York. There's something about this freedom, I think. Being so free and wild, it's unreal. It's like going back in time. There are a lot of voices drowning in the sea. There's too many voices talking back at me. Inside his scales, inside the skin. There are a lot of choices waiting to be made. Too many choices. The show. Holy hell, mate, these are like a hundred mil wide. Cannot take this anymore. Promise and the same for me. Standing by the show. So we've woken up on our last day up there at Chappie's place um, and this morning we're to pack up camp, um, go and get the cherubin pots and then start heading back down the coast. Big drive ahead of us and a big pack up ahead of us and I'm going to send the drone up right because Chappie and all the boys out there have told us this story about this crocodile that they call Grandma. It's an albino crocodile, a saltwater crocodile that lives in the lagoon behind their, behind their, um, you know, their camp out there. And uh, every single morning and every afternoon for the whole time we were there, which was like a good six or seven days, maybe more, um, I've flown the drone up and down the lagoon looking for this crocodile. Um, you know, looking everywhere, going high, going low, um, trying to find this crocodile, and I couldn't find it. Now, this last morning that we're there, we wake up and everything just feels different. Um, when we when you spend a long time in the bush, you start to get a feeling for like the moon cycles and you know all the insects, all the animals, the behaviour of everything, and it's something that as as humans we've kind of lost touch with. Um, it's it, it, it's not instinctual anymore i think because we don't need you know in the modern society we don't need to have these instincts but we've woken up this morning and everything seems different right i actually slept through it but dane said that early in the morning he heard pigs come through down at the lagoon he could hear them you know just just nosing around um rooting up and probably having a feed and making a little bit of ruckus and then all of a sudden, just before sunrise, he heard a pig start screaming and he heard splashing and that going on. So I woke up and he tells me the story. And I'm like, no, I didn't hear any of it. So I send the drone up straight to the lagoon and here's this albino crocodile. Now, if you look closely, you can see that, because it's a bit hard to see with the light, um, whether it's albino or not, but if you look closely, you can see the last section of its tail is the normal colour and the rest of his body or her body is albino and she's just cruising down the middle of the river like not a worry in the world not worried about us not worried about the drone nothing um, I don't know where she came from because prior to that I've had uh, you know droning this, this lagoon I've seen pigs come down I saw cattle in the water swimming around like all sorts of stuff no crocodile around and this morning she came alive and obviously got a pig and uh and then yeah i was able to capture the albino crocodile on the drone which i'm absolutely stoked with 
And then we moved on to get the cherubim pot. So we pack up camp, um, we leave Chappie's camp and we start heading down towards this river to get our cherubim pots. And, um, you know, we walk through the bush down to the river and Dane and I are separate. We're getting two pots each or something. Dane doesn't have a camera. I've got the GoPro. And I start hearing Dane at the beginning just yelling like, nice, nice. And then so I was sort of like casually walking up the bank and then he starts really yelling that he's seeing a crocodile. And so I've just started legging it, trying to get to him. Coming, coming. Oh, holy hell! There was just two of them. One was just up in the water. Oh my god! Dude, one was up in the water with its nose out like this, and that other one, that big one, was coming up towards it, just going. Oh, oh. Holy! Oh my god! That thing was monstrous. Wasn't it? The other one was pretty big too. The other one was like, its head was like this. You reckon they were male and female? Or you reckon they were like, angry about territory? No, didn't seem like that. Oh my God. That thing was massive. So what Dane spotted there, and you guys caught the end of on camera, and I caught the end of, that's all I saw as well. But Dane reckons he saw two big crocodiles. Um, approximately the same size, around a four metre mark, four and a half metre. So we don't know whether they were two males, you know, like squabbling over um, territory or whether they were a male and a female, I'm not sure. But he said that one was straight upright and you could see its whole belly coming up through its chin and to its head upright like this. And the other one was coming up to it, like blowing air and hissing and growling and carrying on. Um, so we missed that. All we saw was this one then kick up a stink, throw its tail around and, and go down under, which was still pretty cool to see. Um, there were a few other things that morning that, like I was saying earlier, that um, everything just seemed alive, you know, like whether it was the moon cycle, I don't know what, what exactly it was, but we had to get going and I didn't get to fish, which was really disappointing because a couple of days prior, the fishing was, was slow. We, you know, for two days, we got a handful of small barra. Um, and these are the sort of things you want to be aware of. Everything just seemed to come alive that day and the fishing was probably going to be red hot, but we weren't there for it. So um, if you get the chance, always make notes of these kinds of, thi these kinds of things in the wild, things that happen. Um, you know, keep a little diary and try and remember that in your mind so that wherever the moon was or um, whatever cycle of the moon you're in, um, you know, you can always go back on that same time and try and brain the fishing. So that's going to be a wrap for another episode. Um, that's going to be a wrap for season five. Thank you so much for watching. I've already done the outro, so I won't do it again, but I really appreciate all of you for watching. Um, we should have new merch in store right now, so if you want merch, jump in. There's new designs in there. Um, I'm currently planning season six, and it's looking unbelievably fun. You're all going to love that, so heaps more of this type of content, what you've just seen in the last few episodes. See you all soon. It's bloody big, eh? You might whip you like you're a little kid.